I would like to and welcome everybody coming out to the uh, trading lab. And what we're going to have here today is uh, a lab on how to do a calendar spread. And we will actually do a live trade and definitely we will teach you uh, every step of the way of uh, what you need to do if you're doing trade out of your own account. This will only take me about five minutes to do in real time, but because we have this lab, it's going to be stretched out to about a little over an hour. So let's go ahead and get started here. And, but before I get started, uh, there's going to be three phases to this lab. Uh, phase one, we're going to show you how to identify those positions that will give you the highest percentage of return if you did a calendar spread. And then we're going to go into phase two. Phase two is simply to take the position through a series of tests. Basically, we're going to take it through four different tests to make sure that that position qualifies before we do a calendar spread. And, and we also, uh, the main thing, one of those tests is going to be the chart test, which we definitely want it to be going in an upward trend before we do a calendar spread. And then we're going to go to phase three, is simply to show you how to do the calendar spread. And there's only two steps to doing the calendar spread. Uh, you're going to first buy an option and then sell another option against that option. So you buy a long-term option and selling a short-term option. So what we're going to do here today is buy the October and sell the September. Okay. So and if you know how to do a cover call, uh, we're doing the same thing. We're selling an option, but instead of covering it with a stop position, we're going to cover that option we sold with another option. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, first thing I would do is definitely click on the Internet Explorer link, and from here I'll go to the Network of 2000 main website. So I'm going to type in www. I'm going to type in www.networker2000.com and from here uh, what we want to do from here is go to the call writer link okay and click on the call writer link from there uh, we'll be able to get in position to see those uh, positions that's going to give us the highest percentage of return but there is a subscription rate to call writer and it's 49.95 per month uh, but if we scroll down we can see where members of Network of 2000 will be able to enjoy a saving just for being a member of Network of 2000. We also have a 10 day free trial. Okay let's assume that you already signed up with call writers. Simply you have to click on the call writer logo and that takes us directly to the call writer site. And what we're concerned about now is going to the members login right here and we're going to click on the login and basically put in a username and password that we set up when we first set up with call writer. And we're going to simply hit the OK button. Well, we need to change the password here. Let's see. And let's put another password. And we're going to hit the OK button. Okay, so definitely we into call writer, and uh, and the first thing we're gonna do is just scroll down where it says the list, okay? And basically, the list we want to choose is 15 and up, and this month. So definitely we choose and start the price at $15 per share and above, and we choose in this month, which means September, the option that's gonna expire the third Friday in September. And the way we do this, uh, we always do our calendar spread the week of expiration. Uh, we, we, we do it the Thursday before the third Friday of the month. 
and that give us position where we holding the calendar spread for two days and then we're going to come back Monday and close it out. So let's go ahead and go into the list and we'll explain more about that later. And what you see here, the list of positions, and we're just going to go to each position here and really run it through a series of tests. And the first test we're going to run it through is a test called chart test. And we definitely want to stop to either be going to be going in the upward trend. Never do a calendar spread on stop that's going sideways or in a downward trend. Then we're going to run to the second test, which will be the earnings test. And what we're looking for in the earnings test, uh, we're looking to see whether or not there's going to be an earnings announcement during the time that you're holding the option position. Uh, so it won't be in the position during the uh, earnings announcement. If, if it's not, then you will pass the earnings test. Then we're going to go to the opinion test. This is where I will show you how to read all those tough indicators uh, to show whether they're bullish, neutral, or bearish. And you'll be able to read those without actually learning how to read them. And then we're going to go to the big boys test. And we'll definitely show you what the big boys think about this p position here before we get in on it. Whether the big boys are buying it or selling it. Whatever they do, that's what we'll do. And we'll do the opposite of what the individual investor does. Okay, let's get started here. So we definitely want to write down two things from this uh, page. We're going to write down the stock symbol, which is P-A-L-M. And then we're going to write down the stock price, which is $22.28. Okay, that's all we need from Carl Rider right there. So let's go to test number one, which is a chart test. We're going to close out of Carl Rider and go to big charts. And so definitely we need to go to www.bigcharts.com. Once we go to bigcharts.com, we, we will be able to draw our trend line and also uh, set our lower indicators. First thing we want to do is click on the Java chart. Let's go ahead and do that. And next thing, we're going to scroll down here till we see draw trend lines. And then we're going to put a check mark by clicking left clicking the mouse. Okay. Then we're going to go all the way down to where we see lower indicators. And right here, we see three different indicators here. We want the first one to be set on money flow, the second one to be set on MACD, the third one to be set on slow stock cash. If it's not already set there, you, you have drop down by each one of those. You can just set it. Uh, and after you get it set, the first one money flow, second one MACD, and third one slow stock cash, it, you want to go down to the store current settings link and click on the store current settings. What that does, it will lock those indicators in. And therefore, if you close out of bigcharts.com and come back in, they will automatically be set up and you don't have to reset them. Okay, after right, you do this, we're ready to put in a symbol and read the chart. Okay, so we did write down the symbol P-A-L-M. Let's put it in here, P-A-L-M. And, and we're gonna click on the Java chart. And basically, this is what we're looking at here, okay? And first thing we want to do is draw our trend line. And we got two different trend lines. We're going to have a support line that's on the bottom, and we're going to have a resistance line that's on the top. And on the support line, we want to cover all the dips. That's a dip, that's a dip, that's a dip, that's a dip. We're going to cover all the dips and always cover the lowest dip. So we're going to start here. Uh, let's clear that. Okay, we're going to start here and pretty much uh, work our way up this way. Then on the, on the resistance, we're going to cover all the tips and all, we make sure we cover the highest tip. So definitely we'll be able to start here and work our way up this way. Okay? Now, this is a setting triangle. The stock is going an upward trend. And right here we see a breakout. So now it goes up higher. So definitely we want to draw, start another trend line coming this way. 
and resistance line coming that way, okay? And then we get to a head and shoulders and we go into a downtrend, so my report, support line is gonna be this way and my resistance is gonna be that way. Then it came to an upside down head and shoulder and reverse trends again and start going up. My support is gonna be this way and my resistance is gonna be pretty much that way, okay? Now, this is the trend of the stock. It's going in ascending triangle, which is very powerful and will qualify just by looking at this to do a calendar spread. And keep in mind, we're going to only hold this spread for two days, so um, that greatly reduce the risk of the trend reversing on you. Okay, let's go to the money flow. The money flow for looking at don't look at the uh, numbers that you see on the side right there. Do not look at the numbers on the side. What we're looking at is the angle of the chart itself. If it's angled up and ascending triangle, that means heavy buying. If it's angled down and descending, that means heavy selling. Anytime you got heavy buying, the stock will rise. Anytime you got heavy selling, the stock will fall. And right about here, we do see heavy buying indicated by an uh, angle in the actual money flow and it's, it, it was going down but it looked like it curved up okay okay so we do have the bull trend on the money flow let's scroll on down get the rest of our indicators here the next indicator here is macd stand for moving average conversion diversion let's not get caught up into all this technical lingo but definitely, I'm going to show you how to read this. Uh, in order to read the MACD, you want to keep your eyes on the blue line. Every time the blue line crosses the red line, that indicates a reverse of a trend. Therefore, if the blue line crosses the red line to the upside, the stock is getting ready to go up. Then, if the blue line crosses the red line to the downside, the stock is getting ready to go down. And let's go back through the chart and see if we can read some of these ups and downs on the MACD. The first cross over to the upside we see right here. And we do see a line that has to trace all the way up. And it's a dot on the actual chart up here. And we keep our eye on the dot and keep the line on the cross and it will tell us when to buy, actually buy that stock. Right there on that dip right there. And if you had bought right here, where it's telling you to buy, uh, you would know a lot of money because you could have rolled pretty much all the way up to that tip right there, okay? So basically, uh, you would have around $11 per share and been able to sell around $18 a share. That's a seven point movement right there if you just played that particular crossover right there on the MACD. Okay, then the MACD, the blue line crossed back to the downside right here. So let's put our line on there. And basically just telling you to sell right there on that tip right there. If you trace up, you can see a dot on the actual chart. It's telling you to sell right there on the tip, okay? And you see a crossover back to the upside. And let's put our line on there. And telling you to buy it back again right there on the dip, okay? So, one, buy, buy on the dip, sell on the tip. Buy low, sell high. Buy the weakness, sell the strength. Buy support, sell the, I mean, resistance. And that's what it's telling you what to do, okay? And then it crosses back to the downside right here and traces up to your actual chart. Right before that gap down on the chart, it's telling you to sell. Definitely, it, once you sell your call option, you definitely want to buy put options at the same time. Now you can make money as the stock go back down. If you had bought a put option here, you would bought it at around 19, and you'd been able to sell it at around uh, nine. So that's a 10 point movement right there, all the way down from here to here, okay? So we made money as the stock go up, now we're making money as the stock go back down. Okay, this, so that's how we read our crossover. Just keep your eyes on the blue line. Okay, so definitely what we're concerned about there is what's going on with the stock right about here. And that's what we're concerned about. We do see a crossover to the upside right here. 
but we do not see where it crossed back to the downside. So that means that particular trend where it pivoted at right there is sustaining itself. And it would be good to do a calendar spread on this one <coughs> simply because um, we do not see no indication that it's getting ready to cross back to the downside. <laughs> okay, so we got bullish on the chart, bullish on mine flow, and bullish on the MACD. Let's go to the slow stochaster here. Now, I'll show you how to use the slow stochaster. Simply keep your eyes on the red line. Every time the red line crosses the blue line, that indicates a reversal of trend. If the red line crosses the blue line to the upside, the stock is getting ready to go up. If the red line crosses the blue line to the downside, the stock is getting ready to go down. Okay? But the biggest difference between the stock, slow stock cash and the MACD is the slow stock cash will measure every little bump on the road, whereas the MACD will measure your bigger trend. And a lot of questions I get, <coughs> which one will I put more weight to? That simply uh, depends on how long before my options expire. If I got two or three months before my options expire, I'm not worried about any more bumps in the road because I know I'm on a bigger trend. And definitely I will have time to recover. But if I only have a few days or a few hours left before my options expire, I'm looking at every little bump, and it's going to be really crucial because I can't afford to take any dips. So I definitely will get out before I take any dips. Okay, let's go through the chart here and uh, see if we can read this uh, chart, this MACD here, some of these crossovers. Uh, it's kind of hard for us to see the top here. Let's see. Let's see if we can uh, read uh, this. Okay, okay, we see a crossover to the downside right here. And let's scroll up and, and see if, if we can really uh, go to, well, it's going to be hard. We see it to the downside right there. Let's put our line up right there. And it's really telling us to actually sell the stock right there on that tip. If you trace the line right up and then you see a dot right up on the stock position. Then, if we scroll down some, it crosses back to the upside right here. Let's put our line down and see what it's actually doing. And you see right there on that dip, you see a dot. You see the dot where it's putting right there on that dip telling you to buy it back. Then it crosses back to the downside right here and we put our line there. Right there on the tip is telling you to sell, okay? Right before that downfall, you will save yourself a lot of money. Then it crawls back to the upside right here, and you do see uh, right down that dip, it did uh, uh, telling you to buy the stock if you look at the stock position. And that's how we read the, I mean, the slow stock casting. And uh, we definitely have another map on chart room where we get more into this, more extensive on how to read these charts. But basically, just remember, once you're doing the slow stock cast, it mentions every little attraction, every little bump in the road. But at the same time, uh, the MACD is measuring your bigger trend. For instance, uh, this is a trend, it's an upward trend. But you see little retraction in between that, but the stock is still going up at the same time. So your slow stock count will measure those little retractions, whereas you might do will measure the bigger trend. Okay, definitely what we're concerned about, what's going on with the stock right about now. And we do see a crossover to the upside right here, which indicates that the stock is going up and will sustain uh, the trend that it made when the MACD crossed over. And we don't see any indication like it's going to cross back to the downside. So definitely we got a bullish sign on all three. The chart, the mining flow, the MACD, and the slow stock caster. So definitely it does pass the chart test. And what, what we basically going to do is go on to the next test. Okay, so the next test we want to go to is going to be the earnings test, okay? So what we're looking for in the earnings test 
is basically whether or not we can find an earnings announcement that's going to be somewhere close uh, within the range where we're holding our option. Okay, so we hold holding this on in a couple of days, so if there's no earnings announcement, then it will pass the test. So, how do we find out when the earnings are going to be announced? Let's go back to uh, car right here, and we're going to scroll down this time and go to uh, where we see earnings.com right there. We're going to click on earnings.com. Now, we'll be able to put in the same stock symbol, P-A-L-M, and then we're going to change the quote here to get earnings, and we're going to hit the get button. That's going to pretty much tell us when the earnings are going to be announced. And we definitely see here where the earnings are going to be announced on September the 18th. And uh, we need to find out what date that's going to fall on. The day is the 18th itself. Okay, so definitely uh, we will not get in on this position because the earnings are being announced today. So it will definitely flunk the earnings test, okay? And we will not do this uh, calendar spread on this position because there's an earnings announcement going to be announced uh, during the time where we're holding this position. So we'll simply go back to the call right here and go to number two on the list, okay? And do the same thing. The next one on the list here is UTSI. Let's go ahead and write down the stock symbol. Then we're going to write down the price of the stock, which is $35.37. Okay, so uh, I can look at this one here and tell that it's going to be a little too far out of the money for me to do. Uh, and I would definitely not want to do it in the money. So let's go to the next one, which is S-I-N-A. And this one here will be able to sell the, I mean, buy and sell the $40 strike price. So let's go to the third one here for S-I-N-A. And then we're going to write down the price of $39.89. Okay, let's take you through the test. First, we're going to the chart test. We're going to simply put in the symbol S-I-N-A. Okay. S I N A and then click on the Java chart. And let's read this one pretty quickly here. Uh, basically, we see a trend line. We can take it all the way up this way and pretty much, uh, well, we do see a top formation here. So let's clear this trend line. Let's, let's take this trend line from here and go up this way. And from here on, on resistance, we're going to go that way. And we do see a top formation where there's a, a head and shoulder there. Then it start reverse and start going down on the support that way and on the resistance that way. And then we did an upside down head and shoulders right here. Then it starts start going back up on the support that way and on the resistance this way. So now this is the trend of the stock right now. And remember, every time stock tend to go up towards support, I mean resistance, it head back down to support, then back up to resistance. But it goes up until it reaches the top formation, then go down to reach the bottom formation, then go back up. Okay, so now let's see. So this is bullish on the chart. Let's see what the mind flow looks like. And we do see right there on the tip of the mind flow, right there on the tip, uh, there's heavy buying coming in, so that's bullish. Okay, and then on the MACD, we do see a crossover to the upside, okay? And that is bullish, okay? Now, on the slow stochastic, we got a crossover to the downside, which indicates there could be some retraction right there. Uh, but the thing about that, we want to assume, since we have a conflict in the MACD and the slow stochastic, that the trend will not reverse itself, okay? And def definitely we will continue on this trend right here. 
So uh, even though we see a, a bad sign and a slow stochastic, uh, we have to assume that it will bounce off of the support level right here. It's already on the support level. And, and as the stock goes down to support, it will tend to head back up toward resistance. So this will qualify to do a calendar spread. Okay, because we are really bullish on the chart, and we're bullish on the money flow, we're bullish on the MACD, but remember the slow stock cash will give you every little bump in the road, which would be a retraction, and I estimate it will go no further than that support line right there, and then we'll go back up on, on the uh, higher trend. Okay, we definitely pass the test on the chart. So let's go to the earnings test on this particular stock, SINA. We're going to go back to earnings.com and we're going to simply put in the symbol S-I-N-A and then we're going to click on the get earnings link. Okay. Let's go over here. Uh, earnings uh, was released uh, July 23rd. Okay. And that's a long way off. And we have to assume since it was released on uh, July 23rd, the next one will be at least three months from now, which we're looking at October the 23rd. So definitely we will not have an earnings announcement uh, within the month of September here, where we're getting ready to do the actual calendar spread. So it did pass the earnings test. Okay, so let's go to the next test. And the next test is the opinion test. And how do we go to the opinion test? Let's go back to our call right here. And we want to scroll all the way down till we see signals. And we want to click on the signals link. And we want to click on the 52 week high. And definitely on the left hand side, you will see a blank here where we can put in our stock symbol, which is SINA. Let's go ahead and do that. Then we're going to click on the opinion uh, right there, and then we're going to simply hit the go button. Once we do that, we'll be able to read the technical indicators on this particular stock without knowing how to run it. Definitely, what you're looking at here are uh, short-term indicators, you got medium-term indicators, and you got long-term indicators. And really, it's each by each indicator it's going to be a score it's going to be a buy a hold or a sell if you see a buy that means the indicator is bullish if you see a hold that means the indicator is neutral if you see a sell that means the indicator is bearish here on uh, an option trade we strictly looking at the short term indicators because we're going to only hold this for a couple of days and we have definitely a short term. And we are looking at 7 day average direction of indicators, 10 to 8 day moving average high low term, 20 day moving average versus price, 20 to 50 day MACD oscillator and 20 day Bollinger Band. Some of this stuff we can't hold to now. But definitely if we try to identify the trend of this stock, we need to know how to read them. So definitely, if, even if we can't hold a announcer, we got a way to read them even if we don't, don't know how to read them. So definitely if you see a buy, and we do see four out of five uh, buys, and one out of five is a, is a hold which is neutral. So we see four bullish and one neutral. So definitely what we're looking at now is the overall score of the short term, which is 80% buy. And what will pass this test if it's at least 70% buy? If it's anything below 70%, it will flunk the, the opinion test, and you definitely need to start off, go back to call right and go to the next one on the list. So, with that, we're going to go ahead and pass this on the opinion test because it's at least 70% on the short term indicator. Okay, last but not least. Let's go to the big boys test. I know a long time ago, if you can't beat them, let's join them. Whatever we'll works for the big boys, if you duplicate that same system, will work for you. But you definitely got to know what the big boys are doing, whether they're buying or selling. How do you do that? Let's click out here and we're going to go to Thompson FN. 
dot com. So we definitely gonna go back to our explorer and type in www.thompsonfn.com dot com, and we just gonna simply hit the enter button. And basically, what we're looking at when we get in here is the IWAS link. That IWAS stands for Institutional Watch. Institutional investors mean your big bills, like your big banks, big insurance companies, big mutual funds, anybody that got a lot of money to buy a lot of stock at the same time or sell a lot of stock at the same time. So let's click on the IWAS link. Find out what the big boys think about the SIA stock. Okay, definitely. We want to put in the symbol S I E A and hit the go button. Okay. Now, how do we do this? And we got what we call a price chart right here. This is our price chart right here, and it's either going to be dominated by the red down arrows or the blue up arrows. Okay. And the red down arrows mean here is seven. And the blue up arrows may have a buying. Okay? So now we see the the red down arrows are dominating this particular chart. So that means this is being dominated by heavy selling. Now we're going to scroll down to our power chart at the bottom here to determine who's selling. Okay, it's either gonna be the big boys or the individual investor. Okay, so now we will go on and scroll down to see who's selling. After we see head of selling dominating. And once we go down to our pie chart, we can read our color scheme here. The gold is institutional, green is retail, and uh, green is not average, which means your individual investor. And we do see 85% uh, individual investors are actually selling this particular stock because they are dominating the today's pie chart, and that's what we're looking for. And we want to recap what we just did. First, look at the price chart to see whether heavy selling or heavy buying is dominating. Then you're gonna scroll down to your pie chart to see who's down the heavy selling or the heavy buying. Okay, so we see here the selling on the price chart, and we see the individuals are doing the heavy selling. So definitely, like I said before, we want to do the opposite of what the individual investor do, does, and we want to do the same as the big boys. So now, if this was done by the gold, and we did see heavy selling, then we would not do this because we're saying that the big boys are selling this. But if the individuals are selling, then it's okay. So this one does pass the big boys test. So now the only thing left to do is uh, definitely uh, show you how to do this kind of spread trade. Okay. So we definitely need to go to our Option Express account, and we're gonna uh, after we get rid of these pop ups, we're gonna go back to our Explorer, and we're gonna type in www.optionsexpress.com. And simply hit the enter button, and definitely that's going to take you to Options Express homepage. What we want to do is click on the red button. Let's go ahead and do that. Once we do that, we're in position to put in our username and password that we set up when we first open up our account. Account. So let's go ahead and type in our username and our password. And we need to uh, log into this account. And uh, once you log into your, this account, you into your own private brokerage account where only you control what goes on. Money coming in, money coming out, uh, the trading. And you only you got control of what is not going to in this account. And your account is protected up to $10 million against theft or anything else. Okay, by default, when you log in, you're going to already come up to account overview. Now, what we're looking for on this page is simply option buying power, okay? 
Option buying power. When we see our option buying power here is 10,613. Definitely that's what we're going to write down. 10,613. Now, uh, that's all we need. Because we're going to actually buy a long term option, then sell a short term option against that option. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and show you how to do the trade. But, but, but before we can uh, buy an option and sell an option, we definitely got to know the option symbol. We got to know the price of the option. So in order to get the option symbol and the prices, we can simply go to the quote link and go to the chain link. Let's go ahead and do that. Once we do that, uh, we definitely see a link here that says calendar calls, okay? And what we're going to do is click on this calendar calls link and we'll be in a position to put in a stock symbol and put up the information on that calendar spread. So let's put in a symbol here, let's run it away. And we simply going to leave the option range at near the money and the chain type at calendar spreads and uh, just simply hit new chain, okay? And once we do that, it's searching for all the option information. If you're going to do a calendar spread on that particular stock, it's going to give it to you. Right there, uh, right there together. And I'm going to show you how to simply do this calendar spread. Okay, the price of the stock, first of all, we get the price of the stock is at $40 per share. Okay, and definitely we want to do the 40 by the strike price because in my system, you always want to do the next out of the money strike price or slightly in the mind. I mean, very slightly in the mind if you're going to do it in the mind. What do I mean by out of the mind? If the price of the stock is above, if it, I mean, if the price of the stock is below the strike price of the option, and we do see strike prices over here. Okay, and the next one out of the mine will be well 45, but we can actually do this at the mine strike price here. And this is one we've been looking to buy pretty much buy the October uh, at 360 and then we actually sell uh, the September at 60 cents. And we could definitely do our calculation right now, we're going to take 60 cents. Divide by 360 and, and, and get our percentage of return. We're looking at a 16% return uh, only for the whole year for a couple of days. Okay? So that's basically what we're going to do. If we're going to buy the October and we're going to sell the September. Okay? So we're going to buy the October 40. And anytime you buy something, you got to always match the asking price. And anytime you sell something, you got to match the bid price. So that's why we're buying the October at the asking price and we're selling the September at the bid price. And that's how we do a calendar spread. Okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay? And uh, basically, uh, all we got to do from this point is click on our money debit which would be our bid price right here. And how do we calculate that? Simply take 360, the price you're paying for the long term, and I'm subtracting 65 cents from that. Let's go ahead and do that, okay? 360 minus 65 cents, well, I did it wrong. 360 minus 65 equals 295. And where did I get 285? Okay. Let's try again. We're going to take the bid, I mean, the bid price from the uh, asking price. And we got this changing all along. Uh, it's changing prices. That's where it did on. And we need to go ahead and do this spread uh, so we can go ahead and get out. But we, right, this is actually real time right here. So basically, all you need to do is simply click on the bid price right here. And let's go ahead and do it. Once we click on the bid price, it automatically pull up the trade screen. And basically, it's automatically filling everything that you need in order to do that particular spread. Okay? And basically, uh, we need to go back. Okay? Let's go back here because I'm going to tell you wrong. 
Um, the first one here, we have to definitely put in the one we're going to buy. And the first uh, column here, in the next column, we want to put in the one we want to sell. And this is something Austin Express just came up with, and this will be my first time doing a trade on this particular page here. So we want to buy the October and sell the September. So we want to put it in that order, and that way we'll keep it, you know, the bid and asking price right. Okay, now we're looking at we're going to buy the, at 360, and we want to sell at 60 cent and we definitely gonna click on our bid price and it should have a right in there now okay and it's still not put it in right but let's let's definitely uh change it we want the first one to read buy to open and the second one to read uh sell to open okay and that's what we want to do okay the first one always buy to open and the second one always sell to I mean, sell to open. So we buy in the long term and sell in the short term. Now we need to calculate uh, how many contracts that we can buy. Pretty much what we want to do is, is look at the price of the option that we're going to buy. And definitely we're going to buy at $3.60. So we're going to take our option buying power, okay, and pretty much and divide it by three six. We got so therefore the buying power we wrote down ten thousand six hundred and thirteen and we're gonna divide that by three dollars and sixty cents. And that equals okay, basically we're looking at option buying power ten thousand six hundred and eleven because we actually uh, in a live trade day and it changes as to actual market go up and down okay so let's look at 10,611 and we're going to divide that by $3.60 and that equals uh, 2,947 shares 2,947 shares really is like the equivalent of 2,900 shares because we're going to drop the extra 47 always round it down to the uh, nearest 100 shares. If we can buy 2,947, we're going to only buy 2,900. Okay? So definitely 2,900 shares represents 29 contracts because for every 100 shares of stock equals one option contract. So we're definitely going to put in 29 contracts. Okay? So we're going to buy 29 contracts on the October and then we're going to sell 29 contracts on the September. It's just that simple, okay? So now, we definitely need to hit the execution button, okay? Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, I think we might have something a little bit. Uh, okay, this is a very important point here. You always want to do a limit debit, okay? Always do a limit debit, okay? So we're definitely going to do a limit debit, and we're going to put our spread price over here, which is uh, uh, two ninety five, okay? And that's what we're going to put in, $2.95. And the way we get that is simply take, uh, and the, the prices are actually moving as we speak here, uh, but actually we want to do the, the 310 because we're going to take the $3.60 minus 50 cent. Okay, we're going to put in 310. And and that's what we want to do. And we're just going to net out what we're paying for. We're paying 360 and we uh selling it for 50 cents. So we're just netting out what we're paying and subtracting from what we're getting coming in. So let's go ahead and hit the preview button now. And always remember, on a credit spread, always do a limit debit because a credit spread, I mean a, a calendar spread, is a debit spread, okay? So never do a limit credit on a calendar spread. I always do a limit debit on a calendar spread. So let's go ahead and hit the execution button. Okay, right away, 
we can see two transactions in line. And this transaction here is selling the October 40, I mean buying the October 40 call. And this transaction here is actually selling the September 40 call. Buying a long term, selling a short term, all in one trade, okay? And definitely reading back the name of the company, it's a day order and your debit, uh, is, limit debit is $3.10. And the commission at 87 cents. Remember, the commission is charging you uh, for two different transactions, 14.95 per transaction per thousand shares. Okay, and then the estimated cost of the uh, order is 9,077. And when you buy, it's attracted the amount of money that you got coming in from the amount of money that you're going out. So this is your net amount that's going out right here. So basically, we want to check to see whether our debit price matches the bid price over here, and it does. And we definitely, if it didn't, we will change order to make it match. But if it does, we simply go ahead go to place order. Now at this point, you have the point of no return. This is a live trading day, and right now Option Express is out there on the trading floor, trading uh, this account. Uh, um, trying to do this debit spread on my behalf, okay? And definitely, when you get to this part, uh, you want to print out this page right here, okay? Because we have the order and the time of the order, okay? And you can see here where it says, Thank you, your order has been submitted and received by Option Express. And usually between 60 and 90 seconds, if there's no problem, this order will be executed. And basically, uh, we got two choices. You can place another trade or check the order status of this trade. In my system, I always check the order status of the trade that you are doing. Why? Because you do not want to uh, do another trade until you see that this one has been actually filled. So let's go ahead and check the order status. Hopefully, we get a field order on this one pretty soon. And we do see the styles coming here, and that's the first thing we look at, it's still open. And the styles column is still open, and therefore the trade has not been executed yet, and that's what we're going to look at. Anytime you do a calendar spread, you're going to see brackets here, linking two different trades in one transaction, okay? So basically, that's how you know you're looking at a calendar spread. Oh. So, this, if you read back, it's going to read your name of the summer of the October 4th call, description of the October 4th call, the bid and the asking price, and this, these are your live prices, and we're going to buy two of them, the long term, which is uh, in 29 contracts, and we did a debit price of $3.10. That's our limit debit, which will be subtracting the price on the asking price from the uh, fifty dollar uh, bid price on the one you're going to sell. Gave us three dollars and ten cents. And basically, uh, the style column is still open, and we could uh, refresh this and see how we got in the field yet. And we're just going to pretty much wait because. Uh, on doing a calendar spread, uh, when you're doing that many contracts, like we're doing 29 contracts, uh, you know, it's kind of difficult for the person on the trading floor to execute because they got to actually match all those uh, contracts up. And, and definitely, uh, most brokers does not have a lot of people doing uh, spreads on behalf of their clients. So it could be a little slow. So we're just going to be patient. And we definitely, every time we refresh, we're going to keep an eye on the prices. And the asking price is still 360 And the bid price is still 50 So we, our limit there to 310 is still good. So let's refresh again. And every time we refresh, we're definitely going to keep our eyes on the status column. Okay? And basically, that's what we're going to do. And we can actually put in a line quote here on the SINA. If we go down to the bottom, put in SINA. And that's 
one of the things I usually do and click on the go. Therefore, I'm keeping an eye on what the stock is actually done. Okay? And basically, this order should go through pretty soon because uh, when we attempted it, was like uh, $40 per share. Now it's at $39.93. And the price of the stock is actually going down. It has gone down seven cents. And let's just keep our eye on Let's do another refresh. And it's still showing open. Okay. And what you want to do if, it, if it's showing open for too long, uh, basically, you definitely want to pick up the phone and call Options Express and see what the problem is. And definitely, uh, if you match your limit debit, is the net. Uh, the money going out, which is 360, and the money coming in, which is 50 cents, it's, there's no reason why this shouldn't go through right away. Okay, so we're going to keep uh, refreshing. And in the meantime, while we're having this come up, we will show you how to close out this position. Now, let's just say uh, once this is filled, uh, that means tomorrow at the close of the trading day, which is 3 p.m. Central or 4 p.m. Eastern time, uh, you're either going to be in position where you're going to get called out or not get called out. Okay? If you get called out, that means the stock price has gone above the $40 strike price. You know, the price of the stock right now is at thirty nine ninety eight. Okay, and definitely, if you get called out, the price of the stock will have to be at forty dollars per share or above. And it's it's probably if we're so close that we probably will get called out. But there's two different scenarios that you may be facing on Monday when you wake up. And one scenario, you do not get called out. In the other scenario, you do get called out. So let me cover what you do if you do not get called out. If you do not get called out, which means the stock price is below $40 strike price, then you only have one thing to do. You Definitely, you bought a October call and you sold the September call. Now, but when money come around, the September call will have expired. But you will still be holding the October call because it don't expire until the third Friday in October. Okay? So you're going to be still holding that one. So the only thing you need to do on Monday to close this position out is sell the October call. And we can walk you through it. And basically, uh, what you want to do is go to your account link, and then we we will not go there right now, but we we'll actually we on to actually uh, fail before we do that. But we'll go to the account link and then click on the uh, uh, the positions link, okay? And once we do that, we will actually see the October. And the only thing we need to do is click on a trading link that's going to be on the right hand side of the option position. Once we click on the trading link, it's going to automatically take us to the trade screen and automatically fill in everything that we need to do that particular calendar spread. Okay? And so that's what we're going to do. So, and definitely. That's very simple if we do not get called out. All we got to do then is just pretty much hit the execution button after we click on the trade link. Now, if we are facing the second scenario, which means we do get called out, then we got two steps to, to go through. Okay? Okay, step number one, we're still going to close out. The, the October 4th call, which is a long term, by holding the trade screen, then hit the execution button. But we got one other thing to do. Now, we got to close out a short sale position. I know we're 
where do they come from with a short sale position and probably what is a short sale. But remember, when you sold the September 40 call, you sell in the other person a right to buy your stock at a specified price during a specified period of time. Because that's the definition of an option. The right to buy a stock at a specified price during a specified period of time. Okay? That's why we paid you that 50 cents. Okay? Now, if that person calls you out, with mean by exercising that right to buy the stock, you, you don't have the stock. Okay? How can you sell the stock that you don't have? You did not cover this by buying the stock. You covered that option. You sold it by buying the option. They don't want your option. They want to buy the stock. So how can you sell the person the stock if you do not own it? The only way you can do that is do what you call a short sale. A short sale is simply selling the stock first, then hoping the stock price go down in value and buy it back at the lower price. This is one uh, technique that stock traders will use to capitalize on the market that's going down. Okay? But this is the only tool that you can use to actually sell this stock without owning it. So now, if the price of the stock goes up above the $40 strike price, the other person will call you out. Now you got to sell them the, your stock by doing a short sale. But the only way you come out a short sale, you got to do what you call buy to cover. And it's not that difficult. Right there on your account link and then go to your positions link, you're going to see the short sale position just sitting there like regular stock position. It's going to look exactly like a regular stock position, but the only difference in the quantity is going to be a negative number instead of a positive number. So you're going to have negative shares. And it's going to, if you get caught in this position and you bought 29 contracts, you're going to have a negative 2,900 shares sitting there. Okay? You're going to have a negative 2,900 shares. And that's how you know it was a short sale position. Simply, once you see that, all you got to do is click on the trade link on the right hand side of it. Okay? Once you click on the trade link on the right hand side, it's going to automatically fill in everything you need to close out that short sale position. And basically, from that point, all you need to do is hit the execution button. Once you hit the execution button, you're gonna go in and close, I mean, and get your order status, you know, place a trade, get your order status, and all that stuff. Okay, so what you do, recapping. One scenario, if you do not get, I mean, one step if you do not get called out, two steps if you do get called out. So if you don't get called out, one step is simply sell the October, which is a long term. Then if you do get called out, now you're going to sell the October, then you're going to do a second step to close out the short sale. It's just that simple, okay? So basically, that's all you need to do, even though that uh, you will gain money right away once this order is filled, money will actually come into your account immediately, okay? Once this order is filled, okay? And then, uh, you enjoy the money, but definitely you need to do what it takes when you come back off a of vacation from enjoying that money. But Monday morning, you got some work to do. So definitely, you want to take your laptop with you or come back home uh, to close that out. So I, I suggest you take your laptop with you so you can close this out. Therefore, you won't have to interrupt your vacation. And as far as calculation, what we're looking for here is how much money is coming into this account immediately. So you can definitely multiply uh, 50 cent times the amount of, of contract that you are actually selling, which is 29, that represents 2,900. So we're going to go 50 cents times 2,900. And that equals $1,450. 
that we will actually be making once this order is executed. And that's my in your hand, that's a ball in the hand, and it's guaranteed we'll get that right up front. And uh, basically, for the holders for two days, okay? Now, let's do another report here to see how we actually uh, done the trade. Uh, if we had not done the trade, uh, we may have to call Options Express uh, to see what's, what's going on, okay? And we're going to give it a, 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 a few more minutes before we do that. Okay. But one way, again, I would like to stress the close up process. One step if you don't get called out. And two steps if you do get called out. And right here we do see where the price of the option on the long term has gone up. And that could be the reason why uh, we're not selling this position. So we, ne we need to go on now and modify this position to reflect uh, the price that is actually at now. So we're looking at a net debit of not 310, but probably we're going to do uh, 370 minus 55, and that equals 315. So that's why we're not exercising this. Oh, that's why we're not really uh, filling this order. So let's go to modify. And since this is a high price, high moving stock, let's go ahead and do a market order here. Uh, we don't need to do a market order. We just need to change our uh, limit debit to uh, 15. And hit the execution button again. And... Let's go ahead and do that. Place this order. And we're going to check order status. Okay. We cancel out the first two. Now our money debit down here does match what we got really got here, which is 315. And hopefully this one will go through right away. If not, uh, we'll definitely call Option Express to actually uh, find out what's going on. And we, we could already be looking at the number here uh, just in case we need to call them. So uh, we definitely need to, I guess, scroll down here and we could definitely see the number to Option Express right here. And we want to definitely call 1888 280820. Anytime you have a problem like that, uh, let's go ahead and call Option Express and actually do this by the phone. So that's what we're going to do right now is call Option Express because we see we're having problems filling this order. So let's call 1888 Okay, and let's see if we can get this all actually filled right away. Okay, and definitely we want to keep an eye on the ass and the 55. Okay, we're going through the prompts here. We got a trade related question. We click the number one. Uh, yes, I put in a calendar spread and uh, I did my limit debit to match uh, the, the price of the net um, money coming in and the money going out and still not executing. Four one zero one two seven eight nine. Oh, oh, did it feel? Okay, thanks a lot. All right, bye. Okay, what happened was the order actually filled itself, and we are on the order. 
at uh, we, we we bought, and this is the actual field price. We bought the long term at three dollars and seventy cents. We sold the short term at at fifty five cents. So now we can actually calculate how much money we had going to account. Let's let's go ahead and see how much money we had coming into the account. How do you see how much money coming into the account? Let's go to the account link, click, and let's go to e confirms. Okay, once we go to e confirm, basically we need to put in period today. And we're gonna to submit today. And we do see where we bought the long term on top, which is 370, and sold the short term uh, on the bottom. So we're going to put a check mark in the short term. And we want to click on the HTML. And definitely it's showing you how much money just came into the account. Let's read this back. And you got the day's date. And the SINA September 40 call, it actually gives you the symbol. And we sold 29 contracts at 55 cents. The actual amount coming into the account, $1,595. It took out $43.50 commission. Let's, let's close this out. And eight cents SEC fee, which we netted. $1,551.42. Okay. And we need to write that down, $1,551.42. Now we need to go back and see how much money we had going out. Okay, we go back to Austin Express and uncheck this one and check the, the, uh, uh, the long term. We're going to click on HTML. Okay, and definitely we can read back the same thing. We bought 29 contracts at $3.70. Uh, it was actually $10,730, but once you add the commission and SEC fee, we paid out $10,773. $10,773. So, definitely we can get our percentage of return. We're going to divide the $1,551. And we're going to divide that by the 10,773. And that equals uh, a 14% return. Okay? So, definitely, we have a 14% return only to hold this for a couple of days. Okay? 14% return for a couple of days is not bad. If you kept your money in the bank at 2% annually, it would take you seven years to get. The same $1,551 that we just got in two days, okay? So, definitely, we see how powerful it is to cut the bank out, which is the middle man. Put your money in a place where you can do the trading and trade your own account. Now, your money is paying you instead of the bankers. Why is this in the bank? The bank got the, the bankers got the ability to trade your money, but you do not. But when you take money out of the bank and put it into a brokerage account, now you got the ability to trade your own money and the bankers can't touch your money now. Now your money pays you. You got in two days what it would have taken you seven years to get in the bank. That's something worth thinking about right there. Okay? So let's learn how to do these calendar spreads and definitely uh, we're going to close this position out and we could pretty much uh, go back and count how to close them out. We want to go to the account link, then go to the positions link. And basically, uh, we're looking at the long term right here and the short term right here. They're on the bottom. Okay? And definitely, uh, uh, tomorrow we close well, right here. These two, these two right here. Buying the long term, buying the long term on the bottom, and selling short term on top. Okay. Now definitely at the close of tomorrow trade day, this one here on the top, the September would be expired. Okay. You will not see it coming up Monday morning, but you will still see. 
the uh, October, which is the uh, the long term. So definitely on Monday, all you have to do is go to the trade link right here. Click on the trade link, and you can see it automatically fills in your trading screen with everything you need to actually sell that position. Leave it on the margin and just simply hit the execution button. Okay? And that's how you do if you do not get called out. But now if you do get called out, let's go back. Now if you do get called out, well, now I don't want to say the October, but definitely you're going to see a short sale position showing 2,900 shares of SIA stock, but it's going to have a negative dot instead of a positive. Let's assume that this is the one, and you will not see that until my, well, probably next Sunday or early Monday morning. But let's just assume that you do see the SINA style and this is it right here. Simply do the same thing, click on the trade link, and that's all you got to do. And then it's going to automatically have everything filled in, but the difference on the action, it will have by the cover. Okay, and all you got to do here is just simply hit the execution button to close it out. It's just that simple. Two steps if you get called out, and one step if you do not get called out. Just that simple. Okay, so definitely that concludes the calendar spread uh, lab plan. And before you can do an actual calendar spread trade, you need to be at trading level, at least trade level three. How do you check to see what trade level that you actually at? Okay, how do you do that? Uh, you can basically uh, go to uh, account and then go to your profile. Click on the profile link and then you're going to click on trade and screen preference. Once you click on that, you will be able to see what level you're at, and you see right here, I'm on level 4. And you can click on the trade level, and it will show you what each level stands for, okay? And right here, if you're negative, your, your account is disabled, and if you're a zero, you can actually buy stocks. Bonds and mutual funds, no options here at level zero. At level one, you can buy cover calls and you can do a short sale. At level two, you can buy calls and puts, which are straight options, and you can do cash secure put right which is selling puts. And level three, you see where you can do debit spreads, which is a calendar spread. A calendar spread is a debit spread, okay? And so now you definitely need to be at level three before you can do a calendar spread because a calendar spread is a better spread. And level four, you can do credit spreads and, and you can actually sell puts and actually sell spreads. And level five, you can actually do naked call writing and naked put writing, okay? Uh, anybody that signed up with us, uh, uh, Option Express knows that we don't have to train uh, our people, our members on how options work and the characteristics of options and how to make money in options. So you do not have to go through a whole lot of scrutiny to upgrade uh, to these different levels, okay? Because uh, really, you do have the knowledge. And Therefore, they're not afraid that you may come back on them later and, you know, saying that somebody should have told you about it if you lose some money. So let's click on that, and we're going to go back and show you how to upgrade. Let's just assume this is level two, and most people signing up with Option Express usually sign up with level two. Uh, now we're going to upgrade. All you got to do is submit trade level upgrade right here. Let's go ahead and do that, and pretty much you can choose the level you want to upgrade to. And basically, I'm already level four, but let's say you want to upgrade to level four, you just click on level four and then hit the submit button. Now, as long as you do level five, you can get at least a hundred thousand dollars in the account. Okay, but definitely you can come from two to at least four. 
regardless of how much money you have in the account. So simply choose your level and submit the request and uh, within about 24 hours you should be upgraded to level 4. It's just that simple, okay? So that's why I suggest everybody choose level 4, therefore you know you won't have to upgrade again if you want to go into more advanced uh, strategies like credit spreads. Okay, so basically that concludes the Academy Spread Lab and we can definitely see where we able to make money and only had to host the position for two days. We're not worried about uh, holding uh, time out of money up for a whole month. We're not worried about buying stock on margin. And we're not worried about uh, the market going against us because if we read the chart right, more than likely we will be able to hold at least a two day trend. If we can't hold a two day trend, we need to definitely go to the chart reading lab. So with that, we're going to go ahead and close out this lab and uh, pretty much uh, um, we need to, you need to really do this and definitely upgrade your account and, and uh, we're going to go ahead and close out on that note. So we'll see everybody at the top and really let's make this money because we really have some testimonies to be able to prove to the world that we can be some successful OTLs, which is option trading food. Congratulations, and we'll see you at the top.